Greetings, my abhuman friends, and welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40k lore about the forces of the Imperial Guard. Like I promised in my original Ogren video, I am back with more lore about these relatively friendly giants. In the previous episode, we talked about more general Ogren stuff, but today I wanted to cover some Ogren types, if you can call it that. And I am chiefly referring to the Bonads, the Bulwarks, the Gunluggers, and the Bolgrins. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about these rather stupid but incredibly strong soldiers, shall we? The Bonad Among the dim-witted Ogryn species, there exist certain rare individuals who, despite their primitive mindset, exhibit a rare glimmer of intelligence, problem-solving capacity, memory, or natural drive. Such individuals quickly stand out among their brothers, making them ideal for the procedure known as Biochemical Ogryn Neural Enhancement, or BONE. Recipients of such procedures generally refer to themselves as boneheads, and possess enhanced cognitive capabilities well beyond those of a regular ogren. Many are able to remember their own name, count some of their fingers, or even make tactical decisions beyond hitting things. Capabilities that quickly mark them out as eligible for positions of limited authority. Boneheads are often the brains of their unit and other Ogrins look to them for leadership both on and off the battlefield. To other Ogrins, the fact that a Bonad even holds his rank is often reason enough to obey, and most are content to trust that everyone who remembers as much as a Bonad probably knows best anyway. As such, a Bonad-led unit often has few discipline problems and a clearly established hierarchy assuming everyone remembers what they are supposed to be doing at any given time. Boneheads are brutal but effective leaders, bellowing orders over the din of combat and punctuating their shouts with vicious blows from their oversized weapons. When the average Ogryn is clumsy and ungainly, boneheads are much more coordinated than their primitive brethren and able to wield weapons with surprising dexterity though their inherent clumsiness can never be entirely eradicated. Despite their abilities, they are not particularly well equipped compared to other guard soldiers, often fighting with the same weaponry as their unaugmented brethren. The main difference between a bonehead and his squadmates is the cerebral implants and modifications to his thick skull. Despite their crude and sturdy appearance, these implants are actually quite sophisticated and capable of withstanding a good amount of punishment. In combat, the procedures enacted upon a bonehead's brains are put to the ultimate test, as they confront numerous decisions and obstacles of command head-on. However, their determination and inhuman stubbornness often see them through any situation while their unique physiology more than compensates for any lapses of discretion or judgment. As a result, an experienced bonehead is often capable of leading his fellow up humans more or less where he is told, with a little practice. Despite their intelligence, boneheads naturally exhibit many qualities that define a good leader. They tend to be driven individuals, stubborn to a fault and unwilling to back down or face defeat in even the most hopeless situation. Such dedication is often born of absolute faith in their superiors, and of course the Emperor, whom the Bonads trust implicitly. They are also not afraid to lead from the front, providing an example to their fellow Ogrins and encouraging them with simple, intuitive commands accompanied by bursts of fire from their ranged weapons. It is debatable whether this is learned behavior or simple necessity, as the stupidity of many Ogryn recruits may render even the simplest commands incomprehensible. However, despite their training and modifications, no amount of cerebral tinkering can completely eliminate the Bonad's basic instincts, 
and even the most intelligent individual can suffer from bouts of savagery. Some bonads are even equipped with implants to magnify or enhance these tendencies, turning them into engines of destruction once a certain criteria is met or trigger phrases uttered via their voxling. The Bulwark An ogrin's primitive nature is the direct result of the harsh environment in which they develop. The cold, feral worlds of ice and death that the ogrin species calls home, providing little incentive for mental development. As such, an ogrin embodies the most primitive aspects of humanity, though greatly enhanced and exaggerated due to their severe retrogression. Yet in spite of their dim-wittedness, they possess an underlying savagery and hardy physique that make them incredibly useful on the battlefields of the 41st millennium. The Imperium of Man often recruits these massive creatures as shock troops, arming them with crude and simple weapons before pointing them at the enemy and unleashing them on their foe. Ogrins are well suited to such tactics, their underdeveloped brains rarely registering pain and injury as they smash into the enemy line. Yet despite this universal proficiency, There are individuals to whom the allure of smashing their enemies to a pulp and breaking their bones is particularly appealing. These are the ogrins who are always near the front of the unit, eagerly wading into combat with whatever weapons happen to be at hand. Some simply enjoy crushing enemy skulls to powder or tearing off limbs with their bare hands while others may rely on their volatile temperament, flying off into a killing rage at the mere mention of a hated enemy. Some are so stupid that they cannot comprehend the nature of their situation, delighting in what they consider to be an enjoyable game, as they revel in the shouts of encouragement and support from their comrades. However, many resort to simple close combat because they can, their primitive brains falling back on their natural instincts in the heat of battle. These sorts of ogrins are always found at the forefront of battle, eagerly overwhelming their opponents with devastating blows from massive fists and oversized weapons. Many tend to have little understanding of ranged warfare, either having forgone much of the training required to further their combat abilities or simply being too dense to comprehend such tactics. This makes them generally savage even by ogren standards, while their size and feral aspect only serves to magnify their combat effectiveness. As with all ogrens, the line between stupidity and mindless rage is a fine one, and easily crossed in the rush of combat. The death of a companion, the harsh words of a commander, wounds inflicted by the enemy, Any of these may be enough to drive such an ogrin into a paroxysm of rage at the mere sight of a foe. This propensity towards violence often serves to make their legendary short tempers even shorter, while a bulwark at the height of his anger is a rampaging whirlwind of destruction that dashes his foes to pieces with the sheer force of his blows. In combat, a bulwark is the embodiment of primitive savagery and rage fighting without thought of restraint or self-preservation. They instinctively attack any enemy within range, swinging their weapons with such bone-crushing force that armor buckles and bodies shatter in their wake. They are immune to pain, injury and fear, blindly charging through whatever obstacle stands between them and the foe. The sight of a bulwark on the battlefield often provides tremendous encouragement and inspiration to his comrades, as he smashes through all those who stand before him. Some regiments view their ogrins as a sort of champion, sending them forward whenever a particularly nasty adversary appears, and looking to them when all seems lost, and the unit is on the verge of breaking. Time and again, as the bulwark's mighty blows split their adversaries apart, and his massive physique ignores all but the most grievous of wounds, his comrades take strength from his steadfast example and push on into the bloody conflict. At other times, the bulwark may serve as a rock upon which the unit is grounded, 
an unbreakable foundation for his comrades to cling to, and an endearing example of faith and devotion. The Gun Lugger An Ogren's ranged weapon proficiency may vary greatly from individual to individual, often coming down to the Ogren's individual dexterity and whether or not he is able to remember how to operate his gun. Regardless, Ogrins are markedly uncoordinated as a rule, and any attempts at accuracy often produce results that are mixed at best. Even the most skilled Ogrin marksman rarely approaches the exacting degree of precision expected of the average guardsman. However, there are many Ogrin who derive substantial enjoyment from the mere act of firing the weapon, regardless of accuracy. Such ogrins are usually truly colossal creatures, whose bulging muscles and gigantic stature allows them to manipulate their oversized weapons as effortlessly as a normal guardsman wields a last gun. Many are even large enough to fire their weapons on the move, acting like a sort of mobile support platform for their fellow soldiers while charging into the fray. Once they begin firing, gun luggers rarely stop until they either run out of enemies or ammo. Though the weapons they wield in combat often vary, the childlike glee these individuals exhibit for their battlefield roles is unmistakable. They are often seen sweeping their great weapons back and forth in wide arcs during battle, grinning stupidly as they pulverize their targets with concentrated streams of high-caliber fire. Some tend to lag slightly behind other members of the unit, stopping whenever a shot presents itself and only continuing to advance at the bidding of a superior officer. They are usually eager to come to grips with the foe, habitually disregarding enemy fire or any considerations of personal safety in order to discharge their weapons at their target. In addition, the expenditure of all their ammo or the occasional weapon jam is a frequent cause of wildly destructive tantrums among these trigger-happy brutes, and many choose to vent their savage rage by charging headlong into the enemy and bashing their adversary to bits with the offending weapon. Other members of these units often rely on the relentless fire of a gun lugger advancing forward while their larger comrade empties round after round at every enemy in sight. Gun luggers are also particularly useful among squads of other ogrins or similarly equipped assault units, providing crucial fire support until their more hands-on companions can close the distance. Even those armed with ripper guns tend to wield them to greater effect than any other ogrin and often the newest and most reliable models within an Ogryn squad are reserved for the gun lugger's use. Due to their constant exposure to enemy fire, some gun luggers hold reputations for outstanding bravery and stalwart determination among the units they fight alongside, serving as mobile rallying points and potent examples of bravery to any faltering ally. They are generally battered in appearance their thick hides scarred and pitted from countless impacts that could have severely incapacitated or killed any other soldier. Yet their remarkably resilient physiology often allows them to shrug off such blows without difficulty, ignoring small arms fire and shrapnel as a man might ignore the buzzing of a fly. Many gun luggers carry other items to add to their destructive capability, in addition to their firearms, including grenades, anti-tank bombs, and other simple explosives which they may hurl at the enemy. These weapons are often quite effective in the hands of a gun lugger, assuming he remembers how to properly arm the device, or remembers it how to use it in the frenzy of battle. Some compensate for such errors by hurling multiple charges at once, or expanding their bandoliers as quickly as possible. Though rarely landing where the Ogren intended, the volatile payload of such weapons frequently remedies any concern regarding the Ogren's accuracy. The Bullgrins Bullgrins are clad in custom-made carapace armor, made out of discarded tank tracks, 
and carry crude assault weapons intended to capitalize on the abhuman's stature and resilience. While some wield power moles or buckler-like brute shields, the simple but effective slab shields are their trademark, locking together to form a mobile defense line. So deployed, these Bulgren units provide their comrades with a wall of walking cover as they advance across the battlefield, soaking up vast volumes of enemy fire in the process. The Ogrens take their protective duties very seriously, and will often form a line at the slightest sound of gunfire, which can be most inconvenient in a crowded trench. Yet Imperial Guardsmen advancing behind the Bolgren squad quickly forget such mishaps, as shots whine harmlessly from the Ogrens' shields, leaving those soldiers crouched in their lee unharmed. Needless to say, casualties are high among the Abhumans themselves, but the close-range bombardments of the Ogrins' grenade gauntlets exact brutal revenge soon enough. The foes are left reeling and shell-shocked even before the mole-wielding Ogrins charge into their midst and bludgeon the survivors to mush. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Boneds and the other types of Ogrins. Would you like to have a squad of these under your command? Or do you think they're too much trouble? Let me know in the comments below, along with any other questions or thoughts you may have. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to click the like button, and maybe subscribe to my channel for more in the future. And if you'd like to support my channel, check my Patreon page from the link in the video description. Even a couple of dollars a month can help me a good deal. I thank you very much for watching and wish you a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects